Hey everyone, Paul here from Ortho Eval Pal. Today I want to talk about the cervical myelopathy cluster. Now, what is cervical myelopathy? That is when the spinal cord gets compressed in the area of the neck and it can cause unusual symptoms like unsteadiness with your arms, a loss of coordination, some unsteadiness when you walk, reflexes could be off, um, and there are, are many different signs and symptoms. But what we're gonna be doing today is talking about the five that fit into this cluster that help to identify if somebody has cervical spine myelopathy. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is called a Hoffman's test. What you need to do is take the patient, place them in a very comfortable position. They should be completely relaxed. Now she does not have any signs of myelopathy, but she's going to demonstrate these for us. The way you do this is you take a look at the index finger and the thumb. You hold the tip of this joint on the middle finger and with your nail, you flick their nail. And what you're looking for is a flexion or these two coming together here as we flick that just like that that would be a positive test okay so that would be a positive Hoffman sign the next test we're going to look for is an inverted supinator test so what you do here is you just gently tap the radial styloid process and if it is positive, the fingers are going to go into flexion and the elbow can extend a little bit. It could be one or the other or both. And it would look like this. Okay. That would be the inverted supinator test. Now the next test we're going to do is called the Babinski test. What you do is you take the back side of your reflex hammer, you start at the heel, you work your way up the outside of the foot on the bottom of the foot and across to the big toe. A positive test is when you do that and the toes extend or go back. Okay, sometimes that'll be delayed a little bit. So you might stroke it and then the toe will go up a little bit later. That would be a positive Babinski sign. So the last two diagnostic factors that we're going to be looking at with cervical myelopathy would be age. Um, we see this more often in people who are older than 45 years old. And the next thing would be an ataxic gait or an unsteady gait. All right. Um, so if a patient is walking and they're having a hard time just trying to keep their, their balance, they may fall off balance even if they're just standing still. That is one of the factors also. If you see three to four out of the five of these, you really should be diving into further diagnostic testing like an MRI or even flexion and extension, x-rays of the cervical spine from a lateral view to see if there's any sort of instability there that is contributing to this. Um, so I hope that today you enjoyed today's video. If you did, uh, be sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Thanks.